And coming up on today's show, Lynette Zhang joins in to talk about one of the things that are happening around the world now that the Fed continues to raise interest rates and we're seeing the pressure unfold in many of the markets, not just in the U.S., but around the globe and specifically in Great Britain, where they've been having troubles with their currency and their bond markets. Although things are happening quickly because I recorded this conversation with Lynette on late Tuesday. And as you may have already seen, Wednesday morning, Bank of England intervenes in the bond market after historic sell-off. So while their currency is going down and while they were planning to stop purchasing their bonds, Bank of England intervened to purchase bonds. So again, uh, printing more money to purchase government debt and interesting here, they mentioned that they will do this on whatever scale necessary. So Again, this happened since Tuesday when I recorded with Lynette. So just wanted to put that note in there. And with that said, here we go with Lynette Zhang of ITM Trading. Joined by my friend Lynette Zhang of ITM Trading. And Lynette, great to see you again. Was really a pleasure to meet you in person last year. And yes. More importantly than anything, how are you doing today and how is everything going? Well, I'm really happy to be here, Chris. So thank you so much for having me on. And, you know, getting prepared ha is going really well. What's happening in the world, not going so well. I mean, I'm seeing some really, really bad signs, particularly in the sovereign, which is government debt markets. That, that makes me extremely nervous. Well, you and me both, and uh, too bad we didn't have you as the Federal Reserve Chairwoman a long time ago. Maybe we would have uh, escaped out of some of this mess, although I suppose when you take interest rates down to 0% for a decade and then raise them quite quickly, Lynette, I know you were not surprised that that would lead to some issues. Although one of the things that certainly at the top of the markets this week, and we'll pull up the chart, is that it is not good times for the British pound. See our yep. chart down here and really just falling off a cliff. And a quick look as we were talking about before we hit the record button. Oh, a, a little jump in, in the bond <laughs> yields there. They're trying to stimulate the economy at the same time that Bank of England is trying to tamp the economy down, just like, but you know, we say it over in England and the reality is, is there's this huge thing that's going on between fiscal and monetary policy and they are at odds with each other because globally you've got the central banks and, and I mean, I don't know, Chris, and maybe I'm wrong about this, but insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. So, you know, what we have is central bankers that are just committed to raising rates no matter what. They're going to raise those rates, even though they admit that by raising those rates, the only inflation that they can control is demand inflation and that that's not really the root of the current bout of inflation, which is more supply chain driven as well as, you know, war driven. And then at the other, at the same time, you've got the governments in this, in the U S that are passing the inflation reduction act or whatever. So in 10 years, a family is going to save 1800 bucks a year on their utility bills, but we're going to spend 439 billion to make that happen in 10 years. They can't figure out what's happening next month, let alone 10 years. So well, they're stimulating. I'm, I'm yeah. sure you're gonna comment on the uh, savings they talked about achieving by the year 2050 as well, which seems. <laughs> they always, you know, whenever they put these things out, you always have to look at the title and whatever that title says, it's just the opposite. Yeah. And you know, it's just the opposite. It's a joke. It's how they sell it. But I wonder, does anybody believe that anymore? Well, I think that the whole inflation and actually seeing prices rise in people's faces, gee, at least in the time since I've been reading and learning about gold and silver, 
I think that's been the biggest wake up call because, you know, yields go up, yes. uh, the stock market goes up or down a little bit, you know, as long as continues on. You can kind of patch that over, but I, I went back to the U.S. for the first time earlier this year. And I mean, just buying food, you can see it. People can feel it. Yeah, and I guess it's not an easy situation the Fed's in. Perhaps the, the answer would be to go back in time and not do what they did. Although you talked about that, the demand side. It seems like there's some an attempt at demand destruction. And I don't know, do you see this playing out where you know now oil is coming down? Now we see inventories building at retailers. So to some degree, maybe that will be enough at least to get CPI to come down for a while and then gives them some cover to pause or <laughs> where, where do they go from here? Well, I don't, they are going to pause and they are going to do an about face. And when they do that about face, I can't tell you exactly when. Um, and yes, oil is coming down. So that makes people feel better at the pump, but the food prices aren't coming down. That's definitely getting worse. We've got massive drought, and this is on a global basis. We're not talking about the US or Mexico or Europe. We're talking about, you know, everywhere on a global basis. And particularly, this is the this is really the piece, Chris. We're hearing, and I remember when I became a stockbroker in the 80s, all the talk was on globalization and great that would be. And I remember saying to myself, you know, I can see some problems with this. And so we shipped out all of our manufacturing jobs, uh, mostly to China because they pegged their currency directly to ours so that corporations could determine what their profits were going to be. But I think it was, what was that, maybe 2013 or 2015? I don't know, I'd have to look on the chart. When um, they de-pegged from the US and you know China's not doing very well so when you build when you build what looks like wealth on a mountain of unpayable debt you hit a tipping point and that's where we are we've hit that tipping point where more debt is just more debt it doesn't really help anything and we actually hit peak debt I think it was like 97. If you look on the monetary velocity chart at the Fred, you can see that it was like 97 when um, taking on more debt was no longer stimulating. Well, that's fallen off. The velocity has fallen off a cliff. So now it's time to pay the piper. We can't kick this can down the road anymore. We're, we're, at, we're at the end. And I think that's what's really happening in here. Plus they need to shift us into a new system. So we need to be scared. We need to be really desperate. And they want us to be so scared and desperate that we will accept this next piece of massive garbage, which is a full surveillance economy down our throats because they did such a good job managing this economy. Yeah, they did for some, but not for most. <laughs>